All right, why does 2022 matter? Now, everybody's having fun. Everybody's talking about it. We tell you why right here on the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Willis. Thank you very much for tuning in today. And I do want to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you, helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Also, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, and of course, upvote the video itself. It'd make us very happy. Anyway, why does 2022 matter so much? Now, everybody's talking about the hype that came with it, and everybody is looking at this team. But the reality is, this team was actually built for 2023. And let me explain. Most of these transfers that were brought in were multi-year guys. Guys that could come in and play for like multiple years, obviously. Jackson Dart, Michael Trigg, Jared Ivey, even Zach Evans, if he wanted to, could play in 2023. So the pathway becomes a little bit different, a little bit easier, a little bit more manageable if you think about it in the long term. Because... I've told you multiple times that Lane Kiffin has a 2022 team, a 2023 team, a 2024 team, and not necessarily a program, and that is absolutely true. But that is not going to stop us from trying to look forward of what's going on and what could be. And the reality of this situation is, and why 2022 matters, is we need to maximize this year to get ready for next year because what we do this year will affect next year. A good season, maximize it, win seven, eight, nine games, let's say nine games, go to a decent bowl game, maybe in Florida or something like that, maybe a Citrus Bowl. I think We haven't done a Citrus Bowl in a while. Heck, I could broadcast live from the Citrus Bowl. We haven't done that, but that would springboard Ole Miss and get a lot of the kinks out and all these new players and all of these getting in the system, Michael Trigg, Jackson Dart, um, even working with Braylon Brown and um, Jordan Watkins. And those guys on the team, they get a lot of work and they get ready for the 2023 season. Because in 2023, if next transfer portal is like this transfer portal, they're going to be in the conversation for the playoff, period for the SEC West, period. But the only way you get there is by maximizing this year. Playing Jackson Dart, making sure he is ready to go. Making sure Michael Trigg is where you want him to be. The receivers um, coming up, making sure the chemistry is all there. Improve the leadership of Jackson Dart. He obviously, every video you see Ole Miss put out this offseason, by the way, is a Jackson Dart pass and celebration. You see him celebrating with players. That is important for a leader. Stuff like that. Maximize that. And you can make him into what Matt Corral became. Because if Matt Corral was the quarterback in 2023, we would be in about the same place as what I think we can with Jackson Dart. He is a Gatorade National Player of the Year, people. They just do not give that out. Everybody should have known the talent that was walking on campus in January, and we did. And we talked about it, and this, we gave you, this is the path. If Luke Altmyer is going to win this job, this is his path to get there. And Jackson Dart struggled in spring, which made this competition a competition in fall if this happens. But this fall, there seems to be a turnaround. And because of that, 
that talent took over a little bit, I think. And you're starting to see like all the stuff that Ole Miss is putting out. Like it's a Jackson Dart throw. You're not seeing anything from Luke Altmyer. And this is nothing against Luke Altmyer. Luke Altmyer competing the way he did made this job more valuable and probably made Jackson Dart better. Now, does this mean we're going to lose Luke Altmyer? Probably. If Jackson Dart is the quarterback, I imagine in December Luke Altmyer is going to go someplace where he can play. And then Marcel Reed will come in and be the assembly line second string quarterback. And then he'll take over the next year. And that's just the way it works. I think Walker White is being recruited. He's not committed, but he's being recruited to be that guy. And it becomes an assembly line, so to speak. And that's what you want to build. But it is important to get these newcomers, this extremely talented group of newcomers. Now, I am dead serious when I say that this is the most talented roster of my lifetime of Ole Miss football. And that's 1976. Easily the most talented roster. And they kind of deserve their accolades. But like I said, and I've said over and over and over again to the point where I get comments sometimes about it. It is one thing to be talented. It is quite another to be good. This year, we got to figure out how to be good. And fall camp, figure out how to be good so that next year we can be good. When everybody knows, like, whoa, this is kind of starting to turn a little bit. Do you remember how Georgia was? Kirby Smart got there in 2016, and everybody assumed that he would turn it around. This would be a turn situation, and it would happen in 2016 and 2017. I think 2018, um, he played for the national championship, and um, he got fourth and 23 by Tua. And it kept building, and, and you could just see the monster that Georgia was creating that you knew eventually it would get there. Next year could be the first time that Ole Miss is viewed as that monster. It's it's weird and crazy to say, but next year is the first time it could be viewed as that monster. Now, there's other teams in the SEC West. Brian Kelly's going to win games at LSU. He's won games everywhere he's been. Don't give me he's not from the South. Nick Saban wasn't from the South either. Uh, Nick Saban signed a contract, I don't know, 2050. Um, I think he's robotic and is going to live forever. Um, Brian Harson, he's going to turn it around at Auburn. I don't know what they're going to do, but there's a lot of culture work that has to be done at Auburn right now. But I think he's going to turn it around. I think he's a good football coach, and more importantly, he's strong-willed. Um, Sam Pittman at Arkansas, good coach, doing exactly what is needed. But what happens when Kendall Browse and um, Barry Odom leaves? What happens to that team then? They're, they're, they're very coordinated, aider dependent in a way that Ole Miss is not. Mississippi State, Mike Leach. Mike Leach is building his team the way he's always done it. They've always been successful, and I think you need to look out for what Mississippi State will become. That being said, if Mike Leach retires, he's 60-something years old. If he retires, the air raid is going to be a difficult thing to switch away from. If you try to go back to a Dan Mullen-type offense, that transition is going to be difficult. Less so with the transfer portal, but it will be difficult. And I think that is pretty much everybody. Oh, Texas A&M, they're going to be good. They're spending all kinds of money. They're the Yankees of the division. Um, But they need a quarterback there. And definitely in show-me mode, I call them Texas A8-4 and right now. Um, I need to see a quarterback. You're going to have to show me. That's that's where we are with Texas A&M at the moment. But... All of those teams, and there's several teams, like the SEC West is a bear. If you are the best in the SEC West, you're probably playing for the national championship. Period. I I did not make up these rules. So, to see where we could go from this year to next year. And this isn't a wait until next year type situation. This is a maximize this year so we can really maximize next year conversation. That is why 
2022 matters. It's about completely building and transforming this program. Period. And they have a shot to do it. They're going to be they're going to be quarterback potentially by Gatorade National Player of the Year with a five-star at tailback, four stars all over the field at wide receiver and tight end. An offensive line that's the veteran group strength of the team with two players that made coaches all SEC. You can see the way this has been built. The defense, for the first time in seven years, there's expectations on them going into a season. Last year it was just like, hey, if we can get around 80, we're going to be good. Do you remember those conversations? If we can get to 80, um, we have a chance to do it. Because, you know, I don't know if I'll ever forgive Wesley McGriff for those defenses in 2018. In 2017. I, I, I just don't know if I ever will. It's absolutely nuts. Um, real quick, I do want to tell you about LinkedIn Jobs. As you gear up for fall and need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. That's like 10% of the world's population, by the way. Then add your job in the hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easier to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It is why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn every week? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. The ultimate college football preview is here, a seven-episode preview with college experts, local team experts, and Odyssey College football insiders. It's everything you need to be ready for the college football season in one spot. Search for ultimate college football preview on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Um, the SEC one, by the way, is on my channel, this Locked On Ole Miss channel. You can see it on the um, one of the playlists below, so check it out as well. So the Senior Bowl watch list. Now, normally we were going to come in and do the, like the October games, but the Senior Bowl watch list dropped a little bit. And it is important that we talk about that because there are some things that people need to realize about this watch list and, and honestly what it means. So here it is right here. Ole Miss players on the Senior Bowl watch list, cornerback Miles Battle, offensive lineman Nick Broker, offensive lineman Mason Brooks, linebacker Troy Brown, free safety A.J. Finley, wide receiver Jalen Knox, wide receiver Jonathan Mingo, wide receiver Jalen Robinson, defensive end Tavius Robinson. Good players. Now, if you remember correctly, we have five teams that placed on the coaches all SEC team and four, I think, on the media team. And that included Jeremy James. So what you get an idea of is the amount of depth that exists on the Ole Miss teams at the moment. There's there's good players and there's guys that are going to have a career on the next level. The other thing you noticed is honestly, the players you see keep keep seeing come through here. Um the Mississippi Made, I'm doing air quotes right now, <clears throat> the Mississippi Made class of 2019, some dudes in that class. I, and I think I've been vindicated because I've, I've spent years defending that class because we missed on like N'Kobe De- N- N- Dean and the offensive lineman for Auburn or defensive lineman for Auburn. I think it's Derek 
something. Um, and some other players like Byron Young and things like that, everybody makes fun of that 2019 class. But the reality is like 10 of the players, 11 of the players that Ole Miss signed out of that class is going to end up playing in the league. Uh, John Rice Plumley is um, on the senior bowl watch list as well, um, along with that um, Derek guy from Auburn um, and Byron Young. So a whole bunch of guys um, popping up from that Mississippi made class. Um, so I like it. Miles Battle, I think, is going to get a paycheck, and he has a chance to play some years in the league. He has the right mindset. He has especially the right build. He's six foot four but he doesn't really play like a tall, lanky guy. Nick Broker, I talked about him on the All-SEC video. He was the lowest-ranked three-star you can be on the rival site, and suddenly you know, he's popping up on all these All-SEC lists. He started at Ole Miss for multiple years, and he's on the senior bowl watch list. Mason Brooks, don't know much about him because we haven't seen him play, but he's the transfer from Western Kentucky. Linebacker Troy Brown, um, transfer from Central Michigan, um, has actually played – against some SEC teams in the past, but we'll see how he does. A.J. Finley, um, really good player. Just a really good player. Super athlete um, and is, has grown every year as a free safety. Jalen Knox, he's the transfer from Missouri that didn't play last year because of transfer rules. And we're waiting to see what he'll look like. So we've waited like a year to see what Jalen Knox can bring. Jonathan Mingo, we know that. We need him to stay healthy anyway. But he, like we told you yesterday, he needs to prove that he is going to be the number one in that wide receiver group. And Jalen Robinson, the transfer from Central Florida, he's going to be a legit real prospect if he can get healthy. J.J. Henry um, might end up starting over him as the season begins. And defensive end, Tavius Robinson. Tavius has grown over his multiple year after transferring to Ole Miss in 2020. And now he has a chance to kind of be the dude. And we'll see what Tavius can bring. But he is he is athletically gifted. And I think he is going to be a real player moving forward. But that is that is your um that is your senior bowl watch list. And some real dudes on this Ole Miss team. And then the thing you get impressed with is like there's only three players from Mississippi State. There's actually four players from Jackson State. That is not trash talk. That's just a factual statement. Um, LSU has like six or seven. Florida has 11. Alabama has 12. Georgia has six, which tells you that they're either going to be a really young team or they're going to take a step back defensively. So you can learn stuff from the senior bowl watch list more so than you can against the Bednarik Award and um, Maxwell Trophy and all of these other watch lists. The Senior Bowl watch list matters because that's basically a short list of who the NFL wants to look at to go into the Senior Bowl. Now, this season, you know, week six, there might be players that pop up on their list. It, that That's not necessarily important. But this is kind of a first impression type deal. And what you learn is, Ole Miss is fourth or fifth in the SEC as far as potential invitees to the Senior Bowl. And that's a pretty big deal. It, it just is. Anyway, coming up after this break, we're going to have Kara McCutcheon, Hotty Toddy Strohs, coming up on the show to talk a little bit about everything. I'm sure we're going to talk about quarterbacks, as we always do and we should do. Um, but we'll see exactly what's going on with her when she comes back after these messages. All right. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, and that would include iTunes and Spotify. So go to iTunes and Spotify. Give us a five-star review. You can say whatever you want to say. You can talk about how awesome my guests are and how narcissistic I am. Um, either way, doesn't matter at all. Just make sure it's a five-star review. I'm here with Kara McCutcheon for her weekly spot. And Kara, before we get started, I do want to float an idea to you that maybe it's everything, maybe it's nothing. I don't know. But up until the first scrimmage, Luke Altmaier and Jackson Dart would always appear together in the side-by-side -side in the promotional Ole Miss football Twitter account. Since the first scrimmage, when everybody got to see Jackson Dart have an amazing scrimmage, Jackson Dart has appeared like four or five times, and Luke Altmaier, nothing. 
Tell me I'm crazy. You know, as much as we want to read into everything, and you may be onto something, um, I'm wondering as well if there's some trying to get Jackson Dart a little more out there around the fan base, having his photo around more. Um, I mean, I've seen like on his first day of school, they had Jackson Dart there with his stuff. Um, you know, they've had him today on there too at practice. So, um, I mean, that could be a sign, but also I'm, you know, kind of wondering if they're trying to get him out there, get him more familiar with Ole Miss fans. There was some iffy reception at some point with him um, that his dad even kind of made a comment about Ole Miss fans. So maybe there's some comfortable, uh, they're trying to like, um, I guess with the culture, you could say, make him more comfortable. So, uh, you know, you never know. <laughs> yeah. And Ole Miss fans have history of doing this before. If we all remember the John Rice Plumley and Matt Corral situation, there was an insular group of Ole Miss fans that was all on JRP during the competition and was vocal about it. And Matt Corral was able to come through. So maybe that's just like the rite of passage for Ole Miss quarterbacks. You have to beat a Mississippi kid out throughout all the mm-hmm. pressure. It'll be interesting to see what's coming. Um, I don't think Lane's really going to let us in uh, anytime no. soon. <laughs> no, and he shouldn't. John Summerall does not deserve to know who our quarterback's going to be. And that I think that's the whole purpose of just not naming it now. But I think he probably already knows who it's going to be because I've heard from everybody I've talked to and everything I've read, um, I've heard Jackson Dart. So, and we'll see. Anyway... Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, the preseason expectations. There's been a little thing like that. I think Josh Pate put out his, um, preseason SEC rankings, had Ole Miss seventh in the SEC West. Um, what, what are you seeing in the preseason stuff and how does that make you think? So I see a lot of six and six. Um, essentially the thought is we're going to win our first six games and then never win again. Um, you know, I think that's a little biased towards all this somewhat. Um, you know, we have Auburn, we have A&M, we have LSU and us all having a quarterback competition right now. Um, there's there's a lot of question marks, I think, on four of our teams. Um, I think Arkansas has a history of kind of whenever choking in a couple games when they're expected to do well. So um, I think there's a possibility they're going to lose one maybe two that they shouldn't. Um, I think that uh, when we play Arkansas, especially late, it's going to come down to depth. Um, I mean, we would typically play Arkansas pretty well, despite, um, you know, any kind of predictions. So um, I think that as like behind Bama, I think the SEC West is the most kind of almost open and competitive it's been. I think Mississippi State, um, they have the veteran on their side, but also I think they have to establish um, a red zone offense. I think they have the air track, but I think their red zone offense was weak last year. And if they don't establish that, especially with a run game, they're just going to get stuck, uh, have a lot of field goals. So um, I still think it's kind of up for grabs. So I don't see how – I think the transfer that we brought in brings some question marks, but I think we have a lot of talent. I think we on both sides of the ball, so – um, I think we're just as much in it as everybody else after in the West after Bama. Yeah, and I don't know how you think it is, but to me, all of these preseason pros- prognostication is just basically them saying, I don't know. Because I've seen mm-hmm. Ole Miss everywhere from 2 to 7th in the West, and they just don't know about Ole Miss. They don't know about Texas A&M. Texas A&M is supposed to be good, but they're kind of a show-me team because they have quarterback issues. LSU, what does that look like? We saw – up close what the Ed Orgeron experience looks like the year after he leaves. Um, Mississippi State in year three, yeah, that's great, but look at that schedule to where you get Kentucky and Georgia from the east. I mean, it's absolutely brutal. Auburn, T.J. Finley, is that really where you want to trust? You know, Tank Bigsby's good, but eh. The West is just going to be really weird. Other than, like you said, Alabama, who – is slated to be pretty good, but it also wouldn't surprise me if Bama lost their game or two this year because they're 
J- Jeff- Jamison Williams was basically their whole offense last year. So they have to replace him. And John Mechie as a sure-handed receiver. They've got to replace him. And then the big bruising running back of Bri- that was Brian Robinson, they've got to replace him, and they replaced him with a scat back. How quickly does it take teams to figure out that they just need to blitz Alabama to where that running back has to block and he can't go out for a passing route, and that you've just taken a game breaker out of the place. It is really interesting in, in the SEC West this year. I I agree. Um, I think Bama will still kind of take the West, I'll be honest. Um, there's nothing I've seen that really thinks that they're going to uh, see really any struggle, to be quite honest. Um, you know, I think their running back is Gibbs, correct? Yeah. Um, uh, I think he's going to be fine. I think their offensive line had a little bit of a stumble last year, but I think they'll be ready to go this season. So I think it's easy to say Bama will probably win the West, or that's an easy prediction there. But I do think the rest of it's pretty open. I think it'll be. I think Arkansas is the easy target to say they're going to go second, but I also think Arkansas has a history of whenever they're expected to do well, they kind of um, lose a couple they shouldn't. And I think. Um, I think the same Mississippi State. Uh, you know, it's really hard for me to just come in and say um, it's a for sure second place. Um, I mean, and, and I'm not trying to be a homer. I I think it's quite possible we could win, you know, six games or we could lose one of those first four or we could lose to Kentucky. Um, I just don't think we really know. I think we mm-hmm. won't know um, at this point, though. So. Yeah, I think on um, the national media and all these people that do prognostications on college football, the transfer portal has them just messed up because teams could change so much more rapidly than they could before. So there's really no such thing as a blue blood other than the playoff contenders year in and year out. After that, you could end up 10th one year. The next year you could be unranked. And and, it, and everybody's just in, those, in this washing machine. I, I think that's the issue that we're having right now in these preseason polls. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how things shake out. Um, I, I've i been reading a lot about what's going on with camp, and um, I think the biggest question mark always for Ole Miss is particularly our defense. Um, I think that we're going to see um, – I, I don't know. Maybe I am a homer, but I think we're going to see some improvements still there in our defense. I think we have a lot of veterans there. I think our secondary is going to be probably one of the best um, out there. I mean, we got a lot of talent right there. We got a lot of veterans out there. Uh, Fedley, Reese, um, Ash- am I right? Ashimi, like, am I saying it right? Yeah. Ashim. Um, Ashim, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm excited. I know uh, I get the Homer says, but. Yeah. It, it kind of is what it is um, when it comes to Ole Miss football. Anyway, get more on the SEC by making Locked On SEC your second listen. Everyday host Chris Gordy and his local experts of Locked On take you across the SEC in 30 minutes or less. Make Locked On SEC your second listen every day. Locked On SEC. Kara, Thank you so much for coming by. I look forward to this every week, and we will talk to you next week. Thanks. Hotty toddy. Hotty toddy.